guys, my name's Jamie Blewett. I run JV Military Antiques in Perth, in Western Australia and Australia. A big hello to all of you out there who uh, love seeing our uh, videos on our channel. Today, I'm gonna update everyone on the uh, proposed counter-terrorism legislation amendment bill, which uh, is looking to prohibit the hate symbols. So look, uh, the last time I spoke about this was uh, back in July, where we talked about the fact that the Australian government had introduced this legislation to become law into the lower house of parliament, which it was passed at a midnight session of about four politicians uh, who all agreed on it. Um, we've been told that the, uh, the committee that was overseeing the, uh, the implementation of this law and how it would um, be drafted has finished their review. And basically, the members of that committee have said that, yep, uh, they agree that uh, medals and, any, and badges and items from the Third Reich need to be banned from sale in Australia. Um, without any exemptions whatsoever for collectors or dealers. So look, um, I've been fielding emails uh, all night, all morning, words getting around that this is what's going to happen. There are, the government is planning to introduce its legislation into the Senate next week. So it's currently the 22nd of uh, November, so you'll be looking possibly at introduction of a law possibly next week or the week after. There's only two weeks of the sitting sessions left for the year. So look, uh, what does this mean for collectors and dealers who deal in uh, these inanimate objects from the Third Reich? Well, it's going to mean that um, you won't be able to sell them. You won't be able to profit from them. Um, these politicians and so-called experts think that uh, we do nothing more than profiting from Nazi memorabilia. Well, that's just wrong. I mean, the idea that uh, in my business that accounts for probably about 40% German items, including Third Reich items, I make a horrible profit uh, out of the misery of people from the past is ludicrous. Um, if that's the case, I make a miserable profit from um, all the dead African slaves that were enslaved by the British colonialists back in the 1700s. If by that, I, that mindset, I make a fat, horrible profit out of selling uh, a French kepi uh, from the, um, the 1800s where they were, the French were in Indochina and Africa. Um, essentially, forcing people to work for slave wages. So the idea that we're here doing this just to annoy certain members of society is ludicrous. So I wanna go through some points today that the legislation raises which are of concern to me and which I would certainly think are of concern to not only collectors and dealers, but people who believe in actual democracy in this country of Australia a country that was founded in 1788 by uh, convicts and uh, members of the British establishment, um, who some might say took away the, a, a country from the indigenous people. It doesn't matter what you think, I'm not here to debate that. I'm here to talk about what this is all about and how it's gonna affect us. So look, first things first, it'll be debated in the Senate next week. So the senators will be the final decision. So we need to make it clear to senators around Australia that you don't agree with this proposed legislation. You need to email them now. You need to ring them. If you know any senators, you need to get on the phone and talk to them. You need to tell them that you think this is a bad idea and you've got to tell them why. It's no good whinging and moaning and carrying on and acting like uh, someone who's uh, just had his wallet stolen. You need to tell them from the heart why this is wrong and why it needs to be held over or changed in terms of the legislation so that we don't have the massive problems that we're obviously going to be having as a result if this law comes into force. So look, the legislation basically says that you can't profit from the trading of third right memorabilia. 
Well, look, I've got some third right memorabilia right in front of me here. Now, I haven't shown you the uh, side that shows a swastika from the two coins, the cross and the medal, but I'll show you the back. Now, I would argue that they're not offensive. Yes, on the other side, there's a swastika on each one of them, but who's offended by this? I mean, I've, I've been trading in this, in this gear for 30 plus years. I've been collecting for 40 years. Who's offended by this? I, I ask you the question, who has ever come into my shop or come to see me and said, you know what, Jamie, I'm offended by that. I'll tell you how many people, zero. Zero people in all those years have come to see me and said, Jamie, I'm, def I'm offended, you shouldn't be selling it. None. Now, in all the thousands and tens of thousands of people that I've traded with, you would have thought there'd be someone that had come up to, that would have had a strong feeling. We all have strong feelings about things. Some people hide their feelings, some people are open about it. Especially in today's day and age, everyone's got an opinion about something, but not one. Not one. Okay? We live, we, our shop in Morley here in Perth is about five kilometres from an area that's that many Jewish people live in. Now you would have thought they would be down here every day telling me how wrong I am. Well, maybe that's because they think that because we sell British, American, French, Japanese items, that we're actually just giving a historical outlet for people to come and buy antiques. Maybe that's an idea, because that's the idea that I started my business in. I don't call myself a purveyor of mass murdering items. I call myself an antique dealer. So that's to start with. So look, if this band comes in, you won't be able to sell these. You won't be able to make a profit. You won't even be able to sell them for what you paid for them. So in other words, not making a profit. The legislation states you can't even trade them. So forget about the idea that you can swap with, with Bob for something else. That's illegal. The legislation also says that the fact that you might send one of these items to someone else in the post, that's illegal. And the person that's receiving it, that's illegal. So the legislation comes in and one party's approached by a police officer and said, where'd you get it from? Not only will they be charged, the person who receives it will be charged. So it's a double whammy. Now, how is that fair? How can a coin cause such offence? How can a medal cause such offence? I mean, these coins, the stamps, they were in regular use in Germany for 12 years. People use them to buy food, pay bills, and now they're going to be illegal. They haven't ever been illegal. Ask yourself a question, why? So forget the idea that you will be able to navigate around these rules, you won't. Have a look at the legislation. It seems pretty watertight. One guy called it draconian, um, and I asked him why, and he says, well, in his history of dealing with the legal profession, um, which is extensive, he'd never seen anything like it. Okay, so it's called a counter-terrorism legislation amendment bill. Now, what has this got to do with terrorism? I ask you. The bill also looks at ISIS. The bill also looks at far-right extremism. What's this got to do with that? Ask yourself the question, what's a hat? got to do with it? What's an armband got to do with it? What's a coin got to do with it? Are these extremist items? No, they're not. Anyone could tell you that. I'd like to see a person argue that that coin is an extremist item. I'd love to see it. I'd love to hear the arguments. But you know what? That's what they're saying. So if this gets in, and you are unlucky enough to be charged and convicted with this, with this law, it's a counter-terrorism law.
So guess what I think is going to happen? You'll get convicted as a terrorist. You won't be able to get on a plane. You'll be on a terrorist watch list. And who knows what else? The maximum penalty, according to this legislation, is 12 months imprisonment. Now, again, I want to sell a coin to my mate or give it to him. Can't do that. 12 months in prison. And there's probably a fine as well. Now, you're going to be locked up, probably in a maximum security prison, because it's counter-terrorism related, with paedophiles, rapists, murderers, thieves, fraudsters, and God knows what else. Just imagine that. Imagine being plucked away from your, say, family home for 12 months. Imagine not being able to see your kids properly for 12 months. That's what it's all about. And that's why we need to fight this. Well, look, what happens if the law comes in and I go to sell this? There's no Nazi insignia on it because the Nazi insignia was removed, obviously by the veteran. Is that illegal? There's no insignia. Ah, but it was made during the Nazi period. Well, so was this. There's no Nazi insignia on that. It's a cuff title. There's never been any Nazi insignia on it. Well, hold on. Maybe that means that not all of the five million Germans who fought for their country during World War II were Nazis. Could that be a possibility? I wonder. Because you would have thought that if all the Africa Corps members were Nazis, they'd have swastikas all over this armband. But not one. Not even on the back. There's not even one hiding. So ask yourself the question, what is to be gained from this legislation? I don't know. Um, what physical harm does this do to people? What mental harm does it do to people? I'd like to know. I'm sure there would be some people out there offended by this stuff, but you know what? When I was a kid, I was offended by Japanese... Sap Japanese people because my granddad told me that his brother was murdered by the Japanese in 1945 on the Sandy Can Death March. But yet, look over here. Japanese swords. Oh my God. Should we burn them? Should we get rid of this stuff? Should we have a big bonfire full of Nazi memorabilia where we get together at night and torch them? But hold on. I seem to remember that in 1938 Someone did that, and those people were the Nazis. Isn't history about remembering what happened in the past and working out how not to repeat the same mistakes? Ask yourself that question. Right. In the legislation, if you read it properly, Commonwealth officers from the state, territory or federal can buy and sell this stuff legally in carrying out their duties as a law enforcement officer. Yeah. So after the law comes in, let's say a police officer can walk into my shop and say, I've got this Nazi medal, I only want five bucks for it. I want to sell it. How are they allowed to do that when I'm not allowed to do that? Well, I'll tell you how they'll be allowed to do that because it's called entrapment. Now, we've all seen enough movies to know that there's a drug bust and it's an undercover cop. You know, it's Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. He's in there busting all the drug dealers and the drug dealers go to prison for 40 years. Millions of dollars rescued and all the rest of it. You've seen it on the news. You're telling me that police officers are allowed to buy and sell this stuff to entrap me because of the effect it has on society? Are you telling me that those same police officers that entrap paedophiles because paedophiles are people that hurt society and physically and mentally hurt children, are the, they're the same police officers that are going to do that to me and other collectors? Is that what this law's all about? Am I going to be put into the same group as paedophiles, rapists, murderers, thieves, fraudsters? 
having that done to me. It sounds like it. So, again, another really good reason to look at this legislation and say to yourself, we need to fight it. You won't be able to transport these goods. The legislation also talks about the movement of goods. Any movement of goods is prohibited. Prohibited by law. You won't be able to send it out of the country. You won't be able to post it to your friends. You won't be able to take it in your car. It's movement of goods. Totally prohibited. Read the legislation. Now, I, I was amazed to see that the legislation claimed that in other countries in Europe and around the world, this is totally banned. Well, guess what? It may be banned, but it's actually tolerated. Now, I was in Germany this year. I went to a fairly famous military show over there, and there were about 120, 150 dealers, mostly German, many Europeans, and a few internationals. Now, what they did was they covered the swastikas with a sticker, and they sold, bought, freely. There were no problems. There were no police there. There were no demonstrators there. There was no one calling each other a murderer or a thief or a rapist or a paedophile. That's because they weren't. Buying and selling. Okay? So where's the common sense here? We're being told that this is banned in many, many countries. It's not even banned in Israel. Now, you would think that it would be banned in Israel. It's not. We've got Israeli customers on our books that we've sold these things to over the years. And what are they doing? Are they, are they buying for what? I don't know. But you would have thought Israel would be a country where it'd be banned. So that argument, as nice as it sounds to a lot of people, is rubbish. This is a hobby. I mean, I don't know about you, but I didn't get into collecting military to become a multi-billionaire. I got into collecting because I love history. I got into collecting because all of this stuff means something to history. All of this stuff was used by people. All of this stuff belonged to someone in the past. Now, do we burn it, throw it in the bin, get rid of it? Because it's going to be worthless after this law comes in. Or do we remember what this is all about and we learn from it? Now, I'm not a neo-Nazi. I've never met one. I don't have any of his clients. So who are these neo-Nazis? Why is this legislation being bunged all in together with counter-terrorism and right-wing extremism? Why? Is it just so that one lobbyist in Australia who has the ear of many, many politicians because he screams the loudest and has the biggest voice gets to just slip it in without anyone noticing? Well, it seems to be the case. Or is it for another reason that we're not aware of? Because I'd love to hear it and I'd love to be involved in a debate. No debate was taken care of. No debate was given to collectors. No debate was given to dealers. Do I sack my staff after this law comes in? Do I tell my uh, family that their level of living is not going to be the same because I've been told that I can't sell stuff that forever has been legal to sell? Do I do that? I don't know. It's a hobby. What, are, what do people do with their collections once this law comes in? I throw them in the bin? Do they get told day one, bang, it's worthless? What happens if it gets stolen? You need insurance valuation and it's on your insurance policy. What, the insurance company's not going to be able to help you? It's null and void because you've got third right memorabilia in there. What happens if you've been given this stuff by a relative? <laughs> Forget it, throw it in the bin. Might as well, it's worthless. It's basically illegal. Where's the compensation for collectors? Where's the compensation for dealers? I've heard nothing. All I'm hearing is that uh, <coughs> anyone who collects this stuff is a neo-Nazi. Now, a couple of years ago, crazy example, I had a client who's Jewish come into my shop with a bayonet, German bayonet from World War II, produced in 1939 and probably used right up until 45. He told me that his father used it during the Six Day War in 1967 in Israel. His father is Jewish. He's fighting on the Egyptian front. 
And I asked him, I said, what do you mean? And he explained to me that at the end of the Second World War, the West German government gave thousands of rifles, bayonets, guns, machine guns, tanks, planes, you name it, to the Israeli Defence Force. Now, I didn't know that. Anyway, looking at the bayonet, guess what I saw? On the pommel, eagle and swastika. Right next to it, massive Star of David as an acceptance stamp. Now, how hypocritical is that? A bayonet that was probably used to fight and kill and maybe kill Jewish people, yet during the war, that's no good, but after the war, it's okay. Anyway, the collector, the Jewish chap, didn't have an issue with it. He laughed. He thought it was funny. I couldn't believe it. We sold it. He got his money. And we move on. Well, what happens to that? Where's the fairness in that? Is there fairness? There's so many grey areas in this legislation. You could r drive a truck through it. It's that bad. So look, what is next? If this gets banned, what's next? Russian? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Russians aren't aren't people that uh, are in the good books with anyone at the moment. Does their stuff get banned? Do we start throwing away all Russian memorabilia? Do we start throwing away Japanese memorabilia because some guy or girl in a lobbyist capacity doesn't like it and the government decides, yeah, well, you know what, we'll get rid of that too because one person says it's wrong. And then you know what's going to happen? You won't be able to collect anything. What happens to your book collection with a swastika on? What happens to all those uh, history books with swastikas in them? Are they allowed to be uh, kept on your shelves or are you going to go to prison for 12 months? What happens to all those things? I don't know. But what I do know is that if we don't contact our senators and tell them what we think, we're going to be walking into a dark period in history where we can't have a hobby that up until this point has been legal and we're being told what to do in a free and fair democracy that is Australia. Thank you very much for listening to me today. If you've got any questions or comments, please contact us or leave a message. Uh, fight the good fight, guys. Contact your senators and hopefully we get through this dark period that's coming towards us. Thank you very much.